20 India 2023. One Earth, One Family, One Future. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam While they're putting up the presentation first, I would like to bow down to Dr. Ghosh. It is very unnerving to talk about quantum physics in presence of such an expert on the subject. I hope you'll forgive any mistakes I make, sir. So quantum physics and Vedanta, you find it often quoted. People, when they talk about Vedanta, they do talk about quantum physics. But on the face of it, it looks like such disparate subjects. Vedanta, a millennia-old philosophy, and quantum physics, a modern scientific theory. How can they two meet? Where can there be any meeting point between these two? That's the thought that will cross most of our minds. But as you learn quantum physics, as you understand its fundamental principles, you are stuck by the uncanny similarities with Advaita Vedanta. And these similarities are not at a superficial level. The depth of their resonance is simply mind-blowing. So today, I want to take you through some of these similarities between quantum physics and Vedanta. So if you look at classical physics, Newtonian physics, in that version of physics, consciousness has no role in shaping reality. In classical physics, the whole cosmos is nothing but matter, material entity, governed by certain laws of nature, and consciousness is inconsequential in the functioning of the universe. People like us, conscious beings like us, are just a blip in the vast timeline of the universe. And what quantum physics did was it shattered this notion. It brought consciousness to the very center of reality. And let me tell you how. If you want to understand the fundamental principles of quantum physics, you should know about this experiment. This is called the double slit experiment. And it is this experiment which revealed all the weirdness of reality at a fundamental atomic particle level, how weird reality is and how beyond any logic reality is. This experiment showed to all the scientists. I'm not going to explain the experiment to you because that will take long time. But I just want to tell you what were the findings of this experiment. So while they were doing the experiment, they found something strange. You know, particles like electrons, subatomic particles like electrons, protons, etc. They came into existence only when somebody was observing them. When nobody was looking, they ceased to exist. Just think about it for a second. Only when a conscious entity is looking at them, they had a specific shape, form and properties. They appeared only when someone was observing them and when nobody was observing, they did not exist. When nobody was uh, observing, what, did, what, what is an electron? You can think of it as a wave or more precisely as quantum physicists describe it, you can think of it as, as existing in all places at once. And it acquires a shape, form and specific location only when someone looks at it. And this was such a weird finding. This, is the find this was the finding of the founders, fathers of quantum physics, like Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, who said, a particle does not have any real existence until somebody observes it. So this was the conclusion. And in effect, because the entire universe is made up of particles, nothing exists until someone observes it. This is called the observer effect of quantum physics and this particular interpretation is called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics. Those of us who are familiar with Vedanta, this may not look like a radical concept, but for most scientists, this was beyond belief. This, was, this just blew their mind. Even the most brilliant minds like Einstein had problem with this conclusion of quantum physics. So he's said to have remarked, what do you mean? Do you think the moon would not exist when nobody is looking at it? Does this make any sense at all? At the same time, quantum physics could not be dis dismissed because it was very accurate in describing the nature of reality. You know, how do you know a theory is accurate? How do you know a theory is good? How well it predicts the working of the world, working of the real world. So Newton had a theory of gravity 
which was followed by Einstein's theory of gravity, which was very different from what Newton said. But Einstein's theory was much better at explaining the movements of the, the planets and stars. So it is a more accurate theory. Similarly, quantum physics was very good, excellent at explaining the functioning of atoms and particles. So it could not be dismissed. So what Einstein said is, I'm not saying quantum physics is wrong. I'm just saying it's incomplete. Quantum physics is missing a very key piece of information, which is why it is looking so strange to us. Particles are appearing and disappearing based on who is observing them. So let me give you an example to explain what he meant. Let's say you're uh, seeing a magician perform a magic trick on stage. So he's cutting somebody into half and putting them together, conjuring up rabbits from his hat. Why does it look like a magic to you? Why does it look like a miracle to you? Because you, don't, you are not able to see what he is doing behind your back. You are missing a key piece of information because of which it looks like there is a miracle happening. But if we were to go up on stage and he explains to you how he is doing that magic trick, then it will make perfect sense to you. There will be nothing illogical or miraculous about what he is doing. So Einstein's theory was that, that we are missing some key piece of information because of which reality looks like some miraculous, magicalous, in, illogical thing. So for a long time, it, it could not be conclusively proven whether quantum physics was missing some information. Although a lot of predictions of quantum physics, in fact, all the predictions, its most weirdest predictions were proven to be correct. More and more it became apparent that quantum physics is one of the best theories we have in describing the nature of reality. But at the same time, it was impossible that it could not be categorically proven that we are, no, miss, we are not missing something which is making it look so weird until the Nobel Prize for winning physicists of 2022 came along. They actually set up an experiment, devised an experiment, which proved that there was no missing information. Quantum physics is complete in, its, in itself and it's a perfect description of reality. So, in effect, what they proved is particles don't have any existence until somebody observes it. And a corollary of this proof is that universe is not real. Let me repeat it once more. Those of you who know Vedanta, this will ring a bell to you. Universe is not real. And I don't know why this is not a headline making news, but it is being widely discussed in science circles. This is a Scientific American article which came out after the Nobel Prize was uh, announced. Universe is not locally real and the Nobel Prize winning physicist proved it. And you can see it being discussed by science nerds and scientists all over the internet. Universe is not real. It's a very exciting proof, isn't it? I'm showing you all this because I don't want you to think I'm making up this fact. This, is, this was the actual finding that universe is not real. Now let us look at the two fundamental principles of quantum physics. Universe is not real and reality is created by observers. And look at the two fundamental principles of Advaita Vedanta. Universe is not real. It's an illusion. It's a mithya. And the second principle, Sakshi Chaitanyam, the consciousness which creates the universe is simply an observer. Simply an observer. It's sheer, it's through observation that Brahman creates the universe. We will delve deeper into that concept. Okay? So far I spoke about quantum physics. Let us do a little analysis of Advaita Vedanta. So if universe is not real, what is real? There must be something which is real, which is creating all this, right? So what Advaita says is only reality is consciousness. The entire universe is nothing but pure consciousness. The universe arises in consciousness, is sustained by consciousness and resolves into consciousness. And this consciousness is called Brahman. That is called Brahman in Vedanta. So again, like quantum physics, this is a very difficult concept to understand. So Advaita gives a very interesting analogy to explain the relationship between Brahman and universe. So it gives the analogy of a dream, Swapna. So when you are dreaming and 
what happens in your sleep while dreaming you're creating this huge universe mountains rivers rocks oceans so that is some very similar to how Br brahman creates this universe just springing up from the consciousness so if you examine the relationship between your dream and you you can understand the relationship between the consciousness principle brahman and the universe so let us examine three three key relationship between you and your dream first the first relationship is your dream exists within you so you are this tiny little person in this bed but what is happening you are dreaming of galaxies stars mountains rivers millions of people all of them exist within you it's created by you sustained by you and it resolves into you the same is the relationship between brahman and the universe the second relationship is that all the inanimate things in your dream are also the products of your consciousness so one question that may arise is the whole universe is consciousness then why is most of the universe inert why are all the planets stars space nothing is appearing uh, conscious right it's only tiny little people like us in one you know, very small corner of the universe who have consciousness you can see it is happening every day in your dream you are creating so many things in your dream you are dreaming of stars desk rooms none of which are conscious but they are products of your consciousness they are purely made up of your consciousness then the third relationship the relationship which is most important for us to understand the resonance with quantum physics is this so what do you actually do to create your dream are you planning where all the things are and bringing material and putting it in your head no the only thing that makes your dream happen is that you witness it you are seeing your dream you are doing nothing else so let me ask you a question can anything exist in your dream which you don't see no can the question itself is wrong because in things exist in your dream because you see it let's say you're dreaming about the stars planets galaxies and next minute you're dreaming about this room with all these people and the screen so what happened to the stars and the galaxies they are tucked away somewhere no they cease to exist the only reason anything exists in your dream is because you see it and what you don't see does not exist it is your seeing that lends existence to the entire dream universe the same is true about brahman brahman who creates the universe is simply the witness the consciousness who observes and brings the universe into existence and anything that exists in the dream exists because brahman is witnessing it that is the reason the whole universe exists so now you can see how the two fund that's why brahman is called sakshi chaitanyam and how the two fundamental principles of advaita vedanta universe advaita vedanta and quantum physics both say the same thing universe is not real and observer creates the universe not only are these similarities so striking i want to take you one step further you know there are many things in quantum physics which are which are blowing people's mind first of all at a fundamental level if something is unreal if something is not real then how can all these real things emerge from it that's one question which from niels bohr they are struggling struggling to answer so okay brahman the consciousness principle is creating the universe but how can a tiny little experiment in one tiny little corner of the laboratory bring particles into existence all these questions are really now those are those are big questions which our scientists are tackling but it is possible to resolve these questions to get answers to these questions by applying the highest teachings of advaita vedanta namely tattva masi aham brahmasmi so i have done an elaborate anal analysis of how this can be resolved in my channel temples books and science due to paucity of time i'm going to stop there i'm not going to explain to you how that happens so if you are interested you can look up my youtube channel temples books and science these are the two play playlists where I have, where i have explained all these concepts in details 
FAQ on quantum physics and Vedanta, science and God. That's it from me. Thank you.